I thought I would write out the formula for uh, the cycloid since we're on this topic. And I think it's a curve that's not really writable in terms of functions like x squared and sine and cosine. But the way you can write it is parametrically. It's pretty easy to write. You've got the rolling ball going from here to there. And you know that when the ball rolls, it's uh, got a constant velocity in this direction. So let's, let's say if we start at uh, 0, uh, that uh, the x-coordinate would progress, of the, of the center of the ball, would progress at a constant speed. So we'd have x equals t, except that's the coordinate of the center of the ball. And at the same time as the center of the ball is doing that, this uh, point on the outside of the ball is going back and forward. And with respect to the center, it's basically doing a sine wave. So if we superimpose those two motions, x equals t, and then superimpose this sine wave, t minus sine of t would describe the, would describe the, because it's minus sine of t, because at first it's going backwards with respect to the center. And then as far as the y coordinate, well, just ignore the fact that the ball is moving. And you know that the moving point on a circle that's turning around and around with respect to the up and down motion is just a cosine function. So we could write y equals cos of t. And uh, these formulas would uh, describe the equation of the, of the, the cycloid. And if you know a little bit of calculus, which, and the number of people that know calculus is, should be phenomenal in the city of Winnipeg based on the number of people that take calculus at university. But of course, we know that you know, people just take calculus basically going through the motions and forget about it the day after uh, the final exam. So I won't ask you to do this by calculus, but, but you would need calculus, which is why I'm saying you won't be able to do this question. Um, let's look at the cycloid with respect to this as the origin of our coordinate system. This is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. It starts off looking like y equals x squared, but it's not exactly y equals x squared. Interestingly enough, if we create a parameter L, which describes the arc length along the trajectory, I think it's true that the formula for the cycloid curve is described not by y equals x squared, but by the formula y equals l squared. Um, that the height up the y-axis is proportional to the square of the distance along the arc length. And um, there's reasons why it ought to do that. And it would be an interesting calculus problem to show that this condition, y equals l squared, agrees with some, agrees in some way with the parametric description of the cycloid. I think that's enough of that. Um, it's interesting, by the way, the number of people that take calculus. I think there's 1,200 people in, uh, in first year calculus at university, plus 200 Aggies that have to take calculus, 400 engineers. And uh, that's just the University of Manitoba. I guess that comes to 16 or 1,800. It's got to be 500 at the University of Winnipeg. And there's a good two or three or four hundred in the technology programs at Red River College. So altogether, there's about 2,500 people taking calculus this year. It's a huge investment of effort in, by society to educate these people, considering, considering how few of them actually want to be there. By the time you get into fourth year math courses, the class size is down to about two students. Um, basically, the, 
the professors are just scaring people away from math by giving them undigestible courses that no one could stand. Like first year calculus, if you manage to make it through that and you still like math a little bit, by the time you get into second year, you'd be totally disgusted with what they're teaching. So, so by the time you get into fourth year, there's not many people that have the stomach left for math. Um, so fortunately, there's math with Marty. Here's the problem, good problem. Take the sum of the harmonic series. Yeah, Colleen's hurrying me up. But uh, the, uh, the sum of the inverse uh, triangle numbers. The triangle numbers, one, three, six, ten. Make a series by the reciprocals of those. One over one plus one over three plus one over six plus one over ten. Infinite series, there's a nice little trick for adding that up. I promise I give problems and sometimes I forget, but there's one for you to try. Inverse triangle numbers add up the series. Nice problem. We'll do it next time we come back.